Meiosis, Madriasis, Meiosis, Madriasis, Meiosis, Madriasis. The pupil seems pretty simple, right? I mean, it's just a hole, right? Wrong. Well, kind of. No, it definitely is a hole. But anyways, let's start with the mnemonic. There's a lot of different ways people try to remember this, but here's a few. My favorite is that madriasis is a longer word than meiosis. So a longer word equals bigger pupil. And then the other one's the other one. And if you don't like the other one is the other one, then meiosis is a smaller word, so it goes with constriction. And then there's madriasis because it has a D, so it dilates. And then meiosis does not have a D, so it does not dilate, so it constricts. AKA the other one is the other one. And either one's fine, just pick one that works for you. I mean, if you wanna just brute force it into your brain, I mean, by all means, go ahead. Just know that meiosis is constriction and madriasis is dilation. And then also make sure to know that meiosis is parasympathetic and then madriasis is sympathetic. Which makes sense because if you wanna have a big pupil, you wanna let more light in, which is gonna be sympathetic. If you're fighting a bear, you wanna see more bear. And then where you're just chilling, eat your food, rest and digest, whatever, then you need less light so you can have a constricted pupil. So we know meiosis is constriction, but how does it happen? How do you get your constriction? Well, it's a two neuron system. With the first neuron starting at the editor westfall nucleus, it travels to the ciliary ganglion. Then the second nerve coming from the ciliary ganglion, which we call the short ciliary nerve, comes off of the ciliary ganglion and innervates the pupillary sphincter. And these nerves are pretty short, so we call them the short ciliary nerves. And because they're short, they make the pupil shorter, AKA constriction. Okay, now madriasis. Madriasis. Madiolatriasis. And this one's a three neuron system with the first starting at the hypothalamus. And it goes all the way down from the hypothalamus down to about C8, T2. And then from there, it goes all the way back up. Well, okay, it travels outside of the spinal column and then travels back up where it hits the superior cervical ganglion. And from there, you shoot off your third order neurons, which go to the pupillary dilator muscle to dilate the pupil, some smooth muscle in the face, and then some sweat glands. But we'll talk more about the sweat glands and the facial branches in the Horner syndrome video. All right, sweet. That's it for meiosis and madriasis. If you want to review the aqueous humor pathway, go ahead and click the video on the screen right now. And as always, there's going to be Anki cards and a PDF of all this info in the description to help you study.